Hey, this is Eric with Web App Reviews, where we highlight the best Chrome web apps and extensions for education. Today, we're taking a look at an extension called Awesome Screenshot. Now, you can find this in the Chrome Web Store as usual, or you can use the shortened URL tiny.cc slash awesome screenshot and I'll take you right here to this spot in the Chrome Web Store where you can install this extension. Now what it is is a Chrome extension that allows you to take pictures of your browser window and then you can edit the image and you can annotate it with shapes and text and things like that. Uh, let's take a look at some examples of how you could use this in school. So, for example, a student could uh, take a screenshot of a picture that they then need to label. So, in this case, I've got a, a B here, and then we've annotated it with circles and lines or arrows and some words showing the different parts of a B. Or, another example, um, here the student could take a screenshot of a map, and then they could annotate on that showing uh, a path that was taken, and then showing some cities, and then putting a key down at the bottom. So something like that would work. Or, another example, maybe you need to um, show somebody the uh, steps for doing something uh, in a web-based program. So in this case, what we've got here is uh, sharing settings for a Google Doc. And so we've shown the section where you add addresses and when you change the sharing settings. So that would help somebody understand how to share a Google Doc. Now let's do an actual example and show this in action. So for this, I'm going to bring up a different screen here. Let's go over to this one here. Now what I use Awesome Screenshot a lot of times for is making uh, help guides or sending somebody an email with a, a picture showing them the step-by-step -step, uh, directions they need to do to complete something. One example that comes up every now and then is logging into our Google Apps for Ed accounts. Um, if somebody gets signed out of the Google Apps account, instead of the sign-in box showing up on the left-hand side, sometimes it'll show up on the right-hand side. And in those cases, the big difference is they have to put in their full email address rather than just their username, and that can trip people up every now and then. So I could use Awesome Screenshot to grab a picture of this and then throw in some annotations to show somebody the correct way to log in in such a situation. So here's the way it works. If you've got Awesome Screenshot installed, what you're going to see is in the top right hand corner in your extensions, you're going to see a little icon there that looks like a camera lens. And you just want to give a click on that. And at that point, it's going to ask you what you want to capture. Now, you can capture three different things, either the visible part of the page, which is basically going to grab everything that I'm looking at right now without scrolling, just what I'm seeing on the screen, or capture a selected area, which would allow me to drag a box around just the portion that I want to select, or the entire page. Now, what that means is it's actually going to scroll down through the page for me, and it'll grab everything on the page beyond even what I can just see. Well, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and capture the visible part of the page so I can show you how cropping and all of those things work. So I give a click on Capture Visible Part of the Page, and what that'll do is open up a new tab where now I'm inside of Awesome Screenshot. You've got this toolbar running across the top that gives me these editing options, and down below is the capture of the page I was looking at. Well, all I really need is this section over here on the right and a little bit of space to throw in some text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the crop tool to begin with. So in uh, the awesome screenshot toolbar, you see the first option I have there is a crop button. If I give a click on that, screen turns a little gray and now I can come here and I can click and drag to select the area that I want to crop down to. So I'll just give myself a little bit of space there where I can put in some text later. Let go of that, click on the crop button again in the top menu bar, and there we go. It has now cropped that down to just that part of the screen. So now I need to add some annotations, and that's what the next few buttons do. You see there's a, a rectangle tool as well as an oval tool. Then there's an option to put in arrows, uh, straight lines, 
and then freehand lines. And any of those can be in whatever color I want. Well, I'll just go ahead and stay with red. That'll work fine for this example here. So what I might want to do is throw some rectangles around the areas I need to draw their attention to. So I need to make sure they see where to put in their username, where to put in their password, and where to click the sign in button. So I could use the rectangle tool to do that. Now I might want to go ahead and grab the arrow tool to throw a few arrows in there to sort of draw attention to some of the things that I need them to do. And then next to that, I could use the text tool, and that's uh, also in the top toolbar over toward the right. Click on the text tool, and now I can click here and I can add some extra information, some text. So I'll click over here and I'll tell them that they need to enter their full email address. And then I'll click down below here and tell them that they need to enter in their password. Now I could also put other things in there to explain stuff, but uh, let me show you one more tool that you get with Awesome Screenshot. And if I go back up to the toolbar, you see there's this blur option here. There's nothing really sensitive about this particular screen, but let's say I wanted to go ahead and blur out uh, part of the email address there so it was a little bit more uh, generic. I could click on the blur option, come down here, and then I just click and drag over the first part of the email address and it blurs that out. So if you need to take anything out, if you need to blur anything out of your image, that will let you do that. And if I really wanted to get uh, kind of fancy here, I could even decide to put maybe a border around this. Uh, so I could change my color to black and then go back to my rectangle option. And if I'm really careful and place it just right, I can probably click and drag a rectangle, a black rectangle around here and give myself a nice little border on there. And so there we go. I have now um, edited that uh, as I want, and I can click the Done button in the top menu bar. And there we go. It's all finished now, and now I can go ahead and move on to deciding how I want to save or what I want to do with that image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back over to the other screen I was working on, and I'm going to go ahead and use one of these because I'm signed in on this one. Um, and so let's say that I am done with this one from earlier as well. Um, let's talk about what your options are now for saving your file. Now you do have some local options. So you could click the Save button to save the image to your hard drive. You could copy it to your clipboard or you could print out the screenshots. All of that is for the local options. But we love to live in the cloud and so if we take a look here over on the right we'll see that we have some online options for saving as well. Um, one of those is to save the image to Google Drive. And so I can give a click on that and it will go ahead and give me a suggested title for this. Uh, I can put in whatever I want in that spot. And then you see I can also mark this as private if I want. And that way it'll just be for me. We won't have that public for anybody to view. I can always change that later, of course, inside of Drive. And I'll just go ahead and hit Save. And now that has been uploaded to my Drive. And there is the link to that document or to that image in my drive. If I click over on my drive tag, we should see that image in there. And there it is, sharingsettings.png down there at the bottom. Fantastic. Now let's pop back over to here. And another option that you have for saving this is to save it temporarily online. And if I give a click on that, what you'll see is it'll let me have three days to save this on the awesomescreenshot.com website. If I go ahead and click Save on that, it'll give me a link to that temporary image on awesomescreenshot.com. Well, one nice thing I can do with this is I can actually open up that image by itself. And then if I'm using another, another extension like Cloud Save, now I can click on the image that's been saved on Awesome Screenshot. And I can choose Cloud Save from the pop-up menu there because I've got my Cloud Save extension installed. And that will let me save it to lots of places, including Picasa. So if you're using Picasa Web and you would like to put your image there, I can click on Picasa. And now it is saving that image to Picasa Web. Let's go ahead and pop over to my Picasa Web Albums page. And let's open up my Cloud Save folder and there it is that image has now been put into my Picasa web albums as well so lots of different ways that you can save and share uh, that image after you're done editing that
So that is awesome screenshot, a great tool to be able to take quick screenshots, do some editing, do some annotation. Great for your students and great for you as well. Well, as always, thanks for watching the video and be sure to visit webappreviews.org where you can see all of our reviews as well as submit your favorite apps and extensions. Thank you.